Hello, and welcome to the Her Effect Podcast. I'm Jamie Cross, your host, and we're going to dive into a topic today that I knew years ago I would want to openly share about. I've actually not really ever talked about openly very much, um, but we're going to talk about the topic of miscarriage today. And I wanted to share my story, if for no other reason, so that when you are lying awake at three o'clock in the morning, wondering if you're the only one, wondering uh, why this is happening, that maybe this would give you some hope and if anything, help you to feel less alone. I'm gonna share a little bit of graphic stories with you. I think it's important as part of the story. So if you have young children um, listening with you, I just know that this will be a little bit more graphic, a little bit more of an intense discussion, but I think it's important so it was 2019 and we found out we were going to have our fifth baby and I was absolutely elated and I'd gotten to the point where I was actually far enough along where I had done a blood test and I knew that we were going to have a boy and it was so exciting and at that time we were, I was traveling around, I was on an airplane every week. Um, I did 22 tours in a matter of a few months just going from state to state rallying the troops and getting ready. We were going to shift over from our e-commerce model into our social selling business model. And so I was on airplanes and exhausted and tired and going from place to place to place to place. And most of the time I was traveling alone. I remember it was, we were in Ohio and it was a late night and we were all sitting at dinner and I, I had a sense of out of nowhere, it was a sense of grief like something was wrong. And I went to the bathroom and there was a little bit of blood. And I just remember thinking to myself, okay, I had, I had bled a lot with Asher. Actually, I was on seven months of bed rest with him because there was a tear in my uterus and I was hemorrhaging. And so I thought, okay, well maybe, maybe this is that, but something deep in my heart knew that something wasn't right. And I had not actually even planned on going to a doctor early on. Like, I'm like, this is my fifth baby. I'll show up and just like have the baby in the hospital when I'm ready to go. Maybe I'll have a couple checkups before that just for fun to hear the baby's heartbeat and all that good stuff. And so I got back from that trip and scheduled an appointment. And it was two days before Christmas. And we were all very excited. And I remember... Um, no, I'm sorry, this appointment was about a week and a half before Christmas. And I sat on the table. I still have the video of me just like talking to the camera and being like, we're gonna find out, you know, we're gonna see this baby and this amazing little life inside of me. My doctor came in and typically it's the nurse, you know, doing these appointments. And it was Dr. Weary who came in and he's like, okay, you ready to hear this baby and, and see your baby? He was doing an abdominal ultrasound. Cause I was like, I don't want to do an internal one. It's fine. You know, it's super disruptive. I think I'm a little bit, I'm far enough along where we should be able to see the baby's heartbeat or hear the baby's heartbeat. And so, and there was, there was not, he couldn't find anything. So the, he was like, you know what? It's probably too early. So um, he gets me all set up and, and he's doing another ultrasound and we see this perfect little, little baby and he's not moving and there's nothing happening. And I didn't like, I wasn't expecting this and I wasn't, it, it felt like it, it was just a, it came out of nowhere, like completely blindsided me. And Dr. Weary said, I'm so sorry, Jamie, um, but there's no heartbeat. And Dr. Weary had been my doctor for the other, other three older boys, except for Asher, cause we were in another state at that time. So I knew Dr. Weary very well. He had delivered Judah and I just thought to myself, this has to be a mistake. You know, we've heard the stories. He said, you know, uh, we can schedule a DNC or we can just let your body take care of, um, you know, can take care of itself on its own. But a DNC would be the most kind thing for you. And at this point, like, I thought I was going to pass out. I remember all the blood draining from my body and I didn't know how to feel or what to think. Or it, it was like this sense of just deadness. And I thought to myself, this can't be, you know, I, I believe in the power of resurrection and we're going to get through this and we're going to pray for this baby. And so 
got in the car and we had brought a couple of boys with us, but they were not in the room with us. And so didn't say anything at that point, but came home and told my mom and told the boys, um, the doctor said that there's no heartbeat and we're, but we're going to pray that this baby comes back to life. And everybody was crying. The boys were just so emotional. My mom was emotional. I was crying. Nathan was just crying. And I didn't know at that time I had, I have close friends that I was able to reach out to, but nothing anyone said could reach the pain deep down in my spirit, deep down in my soul. Nothing anyone said to me could make me feel comforted except for the one thing I could that I held on to was Jesus and knowing that the Holy Spirit is the comforter. And um, it reminds me of the scripture that talks about mourning and grief and that, you know, don't try to cheer up a person when they're grieving and when they're mourning, just sit with them in their grief. I was up in the middle of the night, you know, in the state of panic, because at this point I still was carrying this baby inside of me. And I thought he has to be alive. And then there was this sort of confusion around and if he's not, I'm, I'm carrying like, I'm carrying this baby who's not even alive inside of me. And, and I want him to be alive so badly. And it was just, it's almost like you're separated from yourself. And I woke up at three o'clock in the morning and I just started going on to Google, like searching people I knew, like has so-and-so. And I knew about some influencers that I was following that had been through miscarriages. And I was looking for their podcast episodes and I was looking for their stories so I could feel like I, I felt this sense of like, it was almost like a sense of, you know, I had done something wrong, even though in your mind, you know, that's not true. And one of the things that my doctor told me that was so helpful, and I still hold on to this, is he said, Jamie, there's nothing you could do. There's nothing you could have done differently. You didn't push yourself too hard. You didn't, you know, go on too many airplanes. This is just a natural thing. And, but I thought, to myself and we I had all of our pastor friends everybody was praying we reached out to one of our pastors in California and they were praying the whole congregation everybody was praying and um, I did schedule a DNC and I thought I'm gonna go to that appointment and we're gonna do another ultrasound and there is going to be celebration because it's gonna be a testimony of the living God went back in and it, this day it was two days before Christmas and I went in for this appointment I said, please, can we just have one more ultrasound? Uh, there's been so many praying and my doctor was very hesitant, but he said, yeah, we can check again. And so uh, there was our baby again, completely just there, peaceful, no movement. And it was, it was a moment where I, I felt so close to the Lord and yet so far away from myself. And also in that moment, I just had a vision of our son with Jesus. And it gave me so much hope. I, I thought to myself, he never has to struggle. He never has to be in pain. And while we will miss him here, he is loved where he is. And he is, I'm gonna see him again one day. And so I, they wheeled me into the surgery room and I still remember laying on this table and looking up in these cold lights in this cold room and this white, everything was white and the surgeons and the doctors and they put the, they put the mask over your face with the medicine that puts you under. And I went, I went under knowing that I had a child in my body. And when I came up out of this, this surgery, I felt so empty in my body, in my womb. And I, I woke up and I just cried and I cried and I cried and I mourned and I mourned. And I just remember feeling so alone in all of this. And also knowing like, we have young ones at home who we're about to go into Christmas and this is going to be a different kind of Christmas for our family. And it's going to be okay if we, if we're sad together and we're going to do this as a family and we're going to get through this as a family and got home 
And one of the things that my doctor told me, he said, if you guys are trying to have a baby, we've actually seen in the data and the science that it's healthy to start trying right away again, because all those hormones are still rich inside your body. And so it gave me hope that this was not the end of our story. And so sure enough, this was December, April 28th, 2020. I found out that we were going to have our little noble and, um, and I actually had bled with noble a little bit too. And I had such a, there, there was so much trauma in my soul over this miscarriage, over losing our baby that I, I was very fearful off and on. And I was wrestling to find peace and I was wrestling to find hope. And anytime I felt a twinge, it was like, Oh no, please, Lord, you know, just help me. And one of our friends actually said, have you named your baby, our, our baby that we lost? And something that was very, um, I had two friends. One of them said, name your baby. And then another friend of ours told us that we should celebrate on the date that he would have been born. We should do something special um, on, on his delivery date. And so we named our baby Luke and Noble's middle name is Luke. So he's actually Noble Luke Patrick Crofts. And then on, um, in July of that year, on his due date, on Luke's due date, we, we did something special to commemorate him. And I want to encourage you that the Lord is near to the brokenhearted. And he came to give us life and life more abundantly. And it's the enemy who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And I don't have answers. I still don't know why ha why it happened, but I do know that um, that my baby and your baby and these babies are with the Lord in a place of perfection and peace. And I also know that we as women need to talk more openly about these topics. And we need to be more vulnerable about these things and, um, and less shameful and like, it needs to be less shame around these topics. And we need to love each other well through these seasons. I had friends that brought me meals. I had friends who sent flowers. Um, a really good friend of mine, Sonia Hatter. She was amazing. I remember she sent me the most beautiful flowers and she was so caring and um, Valerie and all of my incredible friends who are just so good in that season. And here's another thing too, as an entrepreneur, I didn't slow down. And I wonder looking back sometimes, like should I have taken more time to slow down? But we were in go mode. We were launching four months for in our social selling and, and you know, and we were doing calls. Uh, I remember I had a DNC on, I believe it was a Tuesday. Maybe it was a Monday. I don't even remember what day it was. Maybe it was a Friday. <laughs> and then like two days later, we had our calls that we would do, um, our rally calls where we were getting new people invited and, and I had to show up. And I probably could have rescheduled or canceled, but I knew that people were counting on me. And so I just kept charging forward and I never slowed down. And I've actually taken some time recently as of grown our team and I've been able to like take some time more for myself and I've really been just thinking about that season again which is why I wanted to share it with you I want you to know that the Lord is kind and he is close and near to the brokenhearted and that he hears your cries and I also want you to know that um this is not the end and it doesn't have to be the end and I've learned so much about the body now as well. There's an amazing woman who works with people who have had many miscarriages, who have had infertility and issues with infertility. And she has these modalities that she does to help your body heal. And she's helps people who've even gone through IVF um, get pregnant. And there's a lot of doubt and worry and fear over, should we try again? And I just want to encourage you, um, just to be motivated by, by peace. And, um, but also dive into some, you know, just taking care of your body 
And I found some peace in just taking control over my health more and um, juicing more and doing things that I knew and to the best of my ability, I was going to take care of my body so that I could nourish um, my next pregnancy. And, um, and there's different modalities for that, you know, everything from juicing and blending and fasting. And there are herbs that are going to help your, your body, um, just rich nutrients and um, things that you can do to help your body hold on uh, more effectively. And But aside from those practical things, I just want you to know that you're not alone and that it's okay to reach out and to, ha to cry out for help and to cry out and just to let your friends in on this process of grieving and let your friends in and to sit with you and love you well and that's a topic I'm going to talk about more as well is how do we, how do we as sisters and friends love each other better and sit with each other more and how do we friend do friendship well and whatever we don't have in friendships, we should become that, you know, and I've gone through seasons of growth and recognizing where I can be a better friend and, um, but just know that you're not alone. And that Jesus wants to, he's here to sit with you and to minister to you peace. And so I just want to pray right now for any of you that are struggling right now with, with infertility or with miscarriage, or maybe you're going through in vitro, um, maybe you're doing some natural things to try to get pregnant. I just want to pray right now. The Lord wants to Bless the fruit of your womb. And in Jesus' name, I just pray healing over your body. I just pray fruitfulness over your life. The grace to obey where God is speaking to you. Um, the empowerment to step in fully into what he has for you and what he's calling you into. I just pray a spirit of peace and comfort right now in Jesus' name. Um, that those who mourn would be comforted. I pray special friendships to surround you in Jesus' name. I pray that you would have a sense of newness and refreshing and that this season of mourning would, would soon end and that there would see, be seasons of joy and that his mercies are new every morning. Just pray comfort in Jesus' name, power in your body and health and wholeness in your body in Jesus' name. May you be filled with joy and peace forevermore. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Thank you that you have taken illness upon the cross and that we have, we have life to look forward to. Thank you, Father. I hope you're, you're encouraged today. And please, um, please do reach out to us. We want to hear from you. Um, you can click on the link here in the show notes. I want to hear from you. Are there any things that anything that we can do to pray for you? Um, send in your prayer requests and our team will be praying for you. All of us here are running with you and championing you. And we are here to cheer you on. And you are loved. And there's so much to look forward to in the future. Just praying blessings over you in Jesus' name. We'll see you more on the inside.